This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Brianna Keeler, and we begin with breaking news. CNN sources are reporting that the woman who set off a massive manhunt is dead. The FBI tweeted just moments ago, there is no longer a threat to the community. All of this stemming from the search for an armed woman described as infatuated with the Columbine school massacre, 18-year-old Sol Pais. Our correspondent, Scott McLean, is in Littleton, Colorado. We have CNN law enforcement analyst Josh Campbell and James Galliano uh, is here with us as well from New York. We also have national security analyst Juliet Kayam with us from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, and Scott, this is this has just changed in the last few minutes. Tell us what you're now hearing. Yeah, that's right. So initially, Brianna, we had been told by the FBI, they'd put out an alert saying that the threat is no longer facing the community. Uh, now we are hearing from two of our local affiliates, KDVR and KCNC, that uh, they are citing the Clear Creek County Sheriff saying that the, sus or the, the person of interest here, Sol Pais, has in fact been killed. It is not clear what the circumstances around that are, but we know that there was heavy law enforcement activity around Mount Evans. This is an area about an hour and 30 minutes drive from where we are in Littleton. It is really into uh, some pretty remote areas of the mountains. Initially, uh, we had been told that the, she was last seen around the foothills area. This is far beyond the foothills area. It's getting out more toward some of where some of the ski resorts are. And, and the road where, where she was on, or at least we, we believe she was, is, is a pretty winding road full of, of switchbacks. And so it would not be easy for her to get to. She was not certainly sitting out in the open. What's also interesting, Brianna, is police made quite clear she didn't have any connection to this community, at least not any connections that they knew about. So where she would have been hiding out, where she would have been staying, whether there was someone uh, who was with her, all questions that are being asked right now. And at this point in time, one of the, we, the there's questions we don't know the answers to. We don't know how she died. We don't know what type of engagement that she may or may not have had with law enforcement. Right, Scott? Uh, yeah, that's true, because law enforcement seemed to be really scratching their heads last night at the press conference where they said, look, we don't know where where she is. That's why we're laying our cards out on the table here and asking for the public's assistance. In the last 24 hours, just this morning, we were told by the Jefferson County Sheriff, that's the county where I am, that there were no credible sightings. She had not been seen on any uh, on any surveillance video, any kind of electronic surveillance like that. They were trying to locate her. It is unclear how they located her in that area. Presumably, there must have been some kind of a tip to lead them out there. Um, but yeah, Brianna, there is absolutely a lot of questions at this point that are still uh, very much being asked. Another one is, on what grounds would the FBI have to uh, actually arrest her? Obviously, th that's not the case right here, but they said, look, we, they were working with the U.S. attorney to figure out what charges might apply in this case, because obviously it's not illegal to buy a gun. The threats weren't quite specific. And so um, they said that they would try to arrest her holder as long as they legally could. How it got to this point where you have a person who is dead, uh, again, a lot of people are going to be asking this question for the next couple of hours. Let's bring in Josh Campbell to this conversation here. Uh, Josh, what is your reaction to this? Yeah, well, there are a lot of questions we have as far as the circumstances surrounding this death. Now, we know that law enforcement considered her armed and dangerous, so there were a number of law enforcement officers from the federal, state, local level that were fanned out across the area. As Scott mentioned, there was something that led them to this location, whether that was their own technical analysis, whether it was witness uh, tips coming in that led law enforcement to this location. There are questions that we still have as far as the cir circumstances surrounding her death, because we don't yet know if she was actually engaged by law enforcement or if she took her own life. We've seen instances in the past with both, where you have a suspect who's on the run that understands that, you know, there is no end game here, and they ultimately decide to take their life. Some of them opt for suicide by cop. Some of them turn their weapon on law enforcement or engage. There's so many questions right now. The good news is law enforcement putting out the word that the threat to the community is now gone. And, and there had been tremendous concern when you're talking about all of the schools that had been closed, that were doing a lockout so that essentially the students were secure inside of the buildings going to class. James, uh, as you're watching this, what is your reaction to this news that the woman who uh, had been wanted for a, a threat, well, non-specific threats, but still threats and had, uh, when it came to Columbine and was infatuated with Columbine, had gone from Miami to Colorado, she has been found dead. 
Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, Brianna, the number one thing was law enforcement wanted to make contact with her. Now, here's the situation. I think we've, uh, you know, a few other folks have spoken to this. Once they came upon her as a person of interest, I mean, she hadn't broken any law yet. And, and depending upon whether or not they find something on the Internet, something she said that could be considered an explicit threat, law enforcement would have had to hold her in what we call a brief investigative detention and try to determine how serious she was about some of the things that she said online. That's the only way they could have held her. So we certainly don't we certainly don't celebrate the loss of a life here. Of course, every life is precious. But in this instance, it would have it could have ended up much more horrifically. And even if law enforcement had been able to bring her in, they would have had to find some piece of evidence or she would have had to say something that they could have then used to charge her to keep her in custody. We do have some new information. I want to get back to our correspondent on the ground there, Scott McLean. Um, Scott, what can you tell us? Hey, hey, Brianna. So we're now hearing directly into CNN from a law enforcement official who's obviously familiar with what happened and with this investigation, telling us that Sol Pais was found dead when police came upon her. So that implies that she was not killed by police, that she was already dead. Obviously, we know that when she got to Colorado, she had purchased a pump action shotgun uh, and was last seen in the foothills. This is further west of the foothills. But again, uh, she had a weapon with her. Law enforcement now telling CNN that she was found dead when law enforcement came upon her, Brianna. All right, Scott, thank you so much for the new reporting. Juliet Kayem, th that's uh, a new detail that we're getting in from authorities that that Sol Pais was found dead. So there appears to have been no engagement or interaction with law enforcement, though very clearly authorities were looking for her and she was likely aware of that. Yeah, I would assume that she was aware of that and had nowhere to go um, and, and took her own life. Um, I've been around and studied the Columbine killing for a long time. The, uh, the, the suicide um, was, uh, is, is, was viewed by the boys, at, uh, uh, by the killers at Columbine as sort of the last gesture until you're viewed as a hero. They had thought about suicide and, uh, in fact, die or being killed by police often. I do want to say one thing that I suspect that we're going to find out over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. We dealt with this challenge here just this week, a couple years ago for the Boston Marathon. When you have a threat like that, can you close down a city? Can you close the schools? And I would suspect that what led to the closing of the schools and the lockdowns was that the information was sort of specific enough, even though it may not have been criminal, to kind of spook law enforcement. And I think that I think they made the right gesture in this case. The community is obviously very scared um, in terms of the anniversary. There's a lot of crackpots around the area right now who sort of glorify the killers in Columbine, glorify the killings. Um, and so um, I don't think it was just sort of, you know, what was put online and the fact she had a gun. I would suspect over the next couple of days we will find out that there was probably something more credible that led to that immediate action of, of sort of, you know, uh, changing uh, the way people live today there. And now they'll, they'll open back up. Yeah, and when you just look at the totality of everything surrounding Sol Pais, her infatuation with Columbine, traveling quite a fair distance from Miami to Colorado, uh, even, as you said, maybe nonspecific threats, but certainly something that caused right. uh, concern in the area. Um, have you ever, Josh Campbell, seen anything like this? So we have a lot of questions here, so we don't exactly know what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, one of, to state the obvious, investigators can now no longer interview her uh, to get a sense of what was actually going through her mind. Was she actually intent on acting on whatever her, uh, you know, the issue was that she had here? <laughs> Excuse me, or was it was just someone who was musing and law enforcement got wind of that and it spooked them enough where they wanted to further investigate? We just don't know. There's no way to compare this to anything else yet because we don't yet have that part of the picture really filled out. I can tell you just because the threat is now mitigated and neutralized, this investigation very much continues. Now they're going to continue to dig into her life. We know that they've been talking to associates. We know that they've been talking to family members, law enforcement trying to build out this picture. And now they'll be digging into her social media. Again, it comes down to trying to to figure out what this motivation was, ruling out that there was no one else that was involved. And then lastly, law enforcement officers learn from each of these incidents. So they know what to be on the lookout for as they come across people, as they come across potential threats. And you can align some of these different signals and patterns in order to stop future threats. So this is going to be a very multifaceted investigation that doesn't end with her death. No. And also, James Galliano, when you look at this, that clearly there was this 
calculus that she was a threat. Now we know that she has been found dead. The question is going to be, was she a threat to people beyond herself? What exactly led to this death? Was this perhaps suicide? Was it, as Juliet Kayyem uh, is hypothesizing, perhaps that she was cornered by law enforcement because they did take such an aggressive uh, precautionary stance when it came to these schools? And that's why, Brianna, right now, the important thing, now that we know that the immediate threat has been has been mitigated, if you will, the important thing now is to put together, was there a conspiracy here? And and what was she actually inclined to do? Did she have plans on doing something like, like to Juliet's point, you know, the glorification and the mythologization of, you know, the Columbine shooters, 